Hey guys, what's happening? So, I finally broke down and bought a smooth stepper with the uh, C25 XP from CNC 4PC. Yeah, actually, I love their products, man. Uh, I actually have a C82 board, which works awesome, and that's kind of why um, I move into the smooth stepper stuff for uh, Mach 3 and I guess Mach, Mach 4. Um, so, let me show you what I got going on the uh, CNC router. Alright, so here's the CNC router. Um, so I already have a smooth stepper in here, and originally I had a Novasun uh, NVM, NVME, NVEM, so that's the C82 board. Um, actually I bought this on eBay, I think it was like, two, I paid like 200 bucks for the smooth stepper and the board. I just designed look like a cover, so in case debris gets on it. But um, yeah, the smooth steppers are awesome, man. It's so reliable compared to the other stuff. Man, it's like, uh, the Novasun stuff is... I mean, it works good, but there's just certain things like, man, like probing doesn't work. So I do actually have a probe. Um, it works rock solid on, on the smooth stepper, man, but it's totally intermittent on the Novasun products. Um, so I'd already actually, you know, done a, a probe hole here, you know, and ran it, and I, I crashed and killed one of my probe tips. All right, so CX25XP. So you can't really see it, but the smooth stepper is actually in there. Um, this, I think mean, this has been around for a couple of years, um, but I really I like how how much more compact it is than the the C82. Like I would have actually got this. I just got a really good deal on eBay. That's why I got the C82. Um, all right, so well, I mean, I mean, it's not really much to show. There's what? I, actually, I, I have this thing set up for five axis. This mill behind me. So I'm gonna be using one all the way up to five. So I recently just put a VFD in a, in a three-phase uh, motor in there. So I'm going to be using the t analog 10 volt out. And to control, uh, control like a forward reverse, I'm going to be doing the uh, outputs here. And I also have like a flood and air. So on the mill, um, I have uh, two, two hoses here. One is for like that bottle back there that I can control that. It's uh, kind of like mist. Put some quill in there, like lubricant, and then I have a. I actually, I can't remember forever. I have, I have so back like 30 videos or something like that. But I have two solid state relays here and here, um, and one, you know, they're they're AC controlled. So one controls the air input here for the the coolant bottle, and I hook up to my air compressor. That's a 110 AC um, solenoid right there. So. This two solid state relays, you know, I need two triggers. One for the air compressor here. So for my air, I have an air compressor, like a little uh, aquarium air tank bubbler. And uh, that's the computer that runs it. Which I might be switching to an all-in-one touch screen. Um, Alright, so i got to take that board off. And really, I mean, it's pretty basic. I'm going to have, like, uh, some probing, and that's it. Probing, some, you know, limit switches, and... This power, you know, it's pretty basic. Like I said, five axis. You can see the five drivers back here. So I, I do actually have an indexer, which I don't know if I ever uploaded the video. I, I this is not offer up score the indexers that I converted over to like a NEMA 23, and then I'll, I also have a fourth axis over there. Another one. All right, so I did actually get the the DIN mail DIN rail uh, option. And they actually, they were out of stock of it, so it took a couple weeks to even, I had, I had to wait a couple weeks to get the thin rail stuff. I guess I could have 3D printed one and designed one, but um, I like how nice and compact and how nice thing is. So this is your actually, uh, your analog uh, trim pot. So sometimes actually when you hook up a, a VFT to these devices, it can pull the voltage down. So normally this would be 10 volt, but some, sometimes when you connect it to a VFT, it might pull it down by a little bit, you know, like... Uh, half a volt. So you can go back with this little trim pot and turn the volume, voltage back up to get in that 10 volt range. Because if you're not familiar with the analog, it's analog. Uh, so when you're at 25%, it would be 2.5 volt, 50%, 5 volt, you know, 75%, um, 7.5 volt, you know, and then 10 volt, 100%. So my spindle, my on my router, it's a 400 you know, hertz spindle, and then because I'm running a three-phase AC motor, it's 60 hertz is the max of the spindle. Um, 
So I'm going to disable the safety charge pump. And then source. So it looks like you have your input voltage here. And then if you wanted to have like an external source to power the external devices, you have 24 volt here. So there must be some, so if, I'm, if I'm supplying it with, uh, suppose it could be like 10 to 30 volts or whatever. So there must be some internal voltage regulator um, on this main board that's basically sending 5 volts to the smooth stepper. Um, because it's not the USB version. I do actually have the USB version of this, the smooth stepper. But the, the power is being supplied by the external and that's Ethernet. So, alright. Three relays. I don't think I'm going to use those because I have solid state relay. I mean, I could use them if I wanted to, but I'll, I'll just send a ground trigger straight from the external right to the solid state relays. Um, inputs. I wonder if, the, like, the C82, you can choose, like, the voltage. Um, I'm going to be doing a ground trigger input, so. But I wonder if they actually have a supply voltage. Uh, E-stopper here. And I did actually put that e-stop in recently too, that top one. Um, let me show you real fast. So when I kind of thought about this, I, I was thinking I was going to have the uh, tool setter in here too, you know. But here's here's the probe. And I just basically put a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in there and just, I plug it in like that. But when I did, when I did this, I basically uh, ran this e-stop too, just because I thought it would be nicer to have a, even though I do actually have a trigger down here, Right now it's right against my other machine. I can kick it from the side, but I figured if I'm over here, you know, uh, I can just bang it right here on the top. So, like right here. Or here. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the price. Um, um, it was like something like three something. I mean, I guess I could have got a whole Centroid Acorns too, for around the same price. Um, I just, I'm still familiar with Mach 3, and uh, I haven't really messed with Mach 4 yet, but I mean, I had some ideas for a custom screen set, a 5 axis screen set. Um, you know, take the existing physics anonymous screen set, maybe add 5th axis to it. Um, Alright. Well, I mean, there is a couple things that, you know, I mean, I guess it doesn't really make a difference. So, I mean, I guess I could tie in. So, you have basically a pin number. You have, like, see, it says uh, on the next one here, it's two and three. So, you have, like, either, like, step and direction, right? But it's, you have one five-volt source. Whereas, at least with the EC500, at least they gave you a dedicated five-volt, like a plus and minus, you know? Like, they separated, you know, five-volt plus. So, this way, well, this one, I'm going to have to tie the two wires in together the 5 volt source and I know they make it a compact I, I don't I don't really like those tiny little connectors I do actually prefer the bigger connectors um, hmm yeah I mean it should be pretty straightforward I mean just a matter of taking the other board out and rerouting the wires in the right spot so nothing really major about it so all right I'm gonna take apart the other one and because it's a cramped space I'm, I'm assuming it's probably gonna take me about eight hours maybe or less I don't know it's gonna be hard to get in there though like when I built the thing in there, I, when I built it, I actually had it uh, outside, you know, and I built it, then put it inside. Hey, I'm making some progress. I'm still going to do some wire cleanup. Yeah, get the covers on. Um, I need to order, actually. I got a new computer, too. I'm going to go from a uh, this HP computer, and then I have it actually an all-in-one. Even though I do have a touch screen, I'm going to take this touch screen and move it to the lathe. Um, but I kind of wanted a, a little bit smaller of a computer or a screen up here, just because I keep on running into this thing. So, um, that and since I'm taking also my uh, MPG, the NV MPG, um, I'm going to sell this stuff on eBay or something. Um, I'm actually going to order one of those, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's, it's really expensive, the MPG is like 265 bucks. Um, the, the USB ones, because I'm just tired of dealing with the... I mean, I want something as reliable as possible. So everything works. Uh, well, I mean, I got the... Got all my motor function working right. I really do actually like how all the outputs are... You can clearly see what's going on, like step and direction. But if you're not... So with the, the red lights that are lit up right now, that's just the direction. So I'm going to take my 
thing right here and you can see my see that so when it's, that red is enabled right there that just means the direction is 5 volt is that just that's if you're not familiar with step and direction, just 5 volt on and off, which tells uh, the driver which way to go. Um, green, got the e-stop connected, my probe is working. Um, so really, I think the last thing I ought to do, so on my diagnostics page, I love this screen set by Physics Anonymous. So what I was talking about earlier is what I want to do is, see how this is 5 axis here? Well, I want to basically add 5 axis to here. So add the B axis up here. So I'm gonna probably try to figure out if I can modify this thing or find a way to modify it. Um, all right, here's the probe. It's actually this probe works awesome on my uh, well on my other one. It, it never worked right on the Novasun stuff, but on my either other ether, Ethernet smooth stepper on my uh, router over there works fine. So see that right there, probe. Yeah, actually I crushed my tip too trying to figure it out on the, on the Nova Sun, even though I did actually buy new Ruby tips. Um, but yeah, I crushed it because it wouldn't activate. Any, any sort of like, even the, the tool setter I had, tool setter, any sort of probing on this Nova Sun stuff, is, is it, it's intermittent. Like one second it works, next second it doesn't work. So, um, can't do that, you know? Like I said, I almost broke this probe trying to figure it out. Um, luckily the, the tip bent and not didn't break the probe, so. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna do another change. Like I said, I'm changing the computer out. So um, I'm gonna move this over to the to the lathe, and then new MPG. So I'm gonna take this my 3D printed mount off. Probably end up just giving that to the person that buys it, and then uh, remove my DB15 extension that I made. Um, yeah, I said everything works fine, pretty much. I mean, there's a couple you know annoyances with the Novus and stuff. I won't go too much into it, but. Lagging, stalling. All right, so next thing is the uh, VFT here. Um, so that blue wire is the VFT. So I'm gonna have forward reverse. Um, my other one was just, I just recently put this in too when I was doing my boring in that last video. Uh, boring for the steering gear. Um, my other one was just basically on and off. You know, it was a single phase motor, single phase, uh, so now I'm running a three phase motor and a VFT where I can control the RPM eventually my, my pulleys are going to be one-to-one -one. so that way it's all going to be controlled one-to-one -one in the uh, software so I had to mount it backwards just because that fit my current wiring the best alright um, all right, so I need forward reverse and then 0 to 10 volt which is that last oh well hopefully I have enough slack Zero. well the outputs are up there on the top so hopefully I have enough slack for that blue cable I should so, all right, so I got everything working. Took me probably about four or five hours. I mean, actually, it made it a little easier because I had the other one working. I think the hardest part is trying to figure out the VFD. Um, you know, the inputs, outputs. Um, just because they, it, the way the board is designed, even on the other one, with the 14 and the 16 kind of being shared, um, you know, trying to figure out what's going on in the documentation. But um, I don't even know if I did it right, but I got it working right. Like, I don't know if I have it set up the way they want it set up, the way the designer uh, came up with in his head. But it seems to work. So, like, on when I'm half speed, I'm getting a... It's a, it's a 60 hertz motor. You know, it's a three-phase motor, AC motor. Um, whereas my other one is a 400 hertz uh, motor. It's a, you know, the 24,000 RPM spindle. All right, so this one, you know, like half speed is 30, uh, 30 hertz. So, yeah, I can, I tell you, so everything's working good. Maybe tomorrow I'll go through the uh, Mach 3 settings, the important things that I figured out. Um, you know, just a combination of different things like the VFD control, figuring out the settings in this thing. Um, this is a Viver VFD that I got. Actually, I got, it was a used one on, on Amazon for 40 bucks. So, um... Yeah, works fine. I got I actually yeah, got another my other motor shaft broke. I don't know if I showed you guys or that, but then I bought a Baldor motor, that three phase, one and a half horsepower. Um you know. It's my other single phase. I had I the only speed control I had was through the belts. But it's a headache to go up there and try to change the belts. 
Um, so now I'm kind of rambling here. But, um, all right, so tomorrow, I'm actually building a new computer, a smaller computer for that. I think I already said that. And I will be back. So tonight I'm going to install the OS on the other machine, the other computer, and, uh, all right, back tomorrow.